Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today's topic is uh, how to call SendGrid API using UDL HTTP for triggering emails automatically. Okay, so let's get started. So uh, let's talk about prerequisites. First, you need a SendGrid authorization key, which is access key whenever you uh, register to SendGrid, uh, then they will provide a access key. You need that. And the second thing is uh, you need, uh, you, uh, you should uh, make sure that your database has this UTL HTTP utility installed. Okay. Uh, once you confirm both these things and you have your authorization key, then <clears throat> there are a few steps to configure all the setups. Number one, we need to download the certificate first. Then we need to create a Oracle wallet. Then we need to load those certificates in that Oracle wallet and then need to create a ACL, then assign a host to that ACL, then privileges to that ACL. And then the wallet we created, we need to link it with that ACL. And then we need to program the final execute or uh, final program where we will put all the request post put requests against our APIs. So let's discuss one by one all over these steps. <clears throat> the first step is download certificates. Okay. Now what? Okay. To download the certificates, we need to go to that API first. So in our case, we need to go to SendGrid API. So uh, don't confuse with this error message. He just saying the post method allows only because he's expecting some input request through post command. Against that post, he will respond as a, a triggering email. Okay. So just ignore for now. And uh, how, let's concentrate on how we are going to download the certificate. So on that API, just click this unlock symbol, then connection is secure, then certificate is valid. So here you have to go to certification password. We have multiple certificates here. So we need to download all except the least one. So how to download, just click any of the certificate. Now click view certificate, then go to details, then copy to file. Then next, then you have to choose page 64 encoded certificate. Then next, now we need to put any location here. So uh, we have to name, let's say certificates or one. We have to save, then click next, next. Now the export was successful. Okay, so okay, then okay. So our one certificate is downloaded successfully. In the same manner, you have to download the second one and the third one just click here view certificate details copy to full and the wizard next 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 you have to say so i i already saved all the doc, uh, certificate so here here is the certificate which we save right now okay so i already uh, downloaded all three send grid certificates one two and three the first one is the root one second one the child the third one is the child to child okay so we have uh, here three certificates uh, here one, two, three, and the same three certificate I already downloaded. Okay. The next step is uh, we need to create an Oracle wallet and then load the certificate to that Oracle wallet. So for this uh, for this step, we will use OIPK. Okay. Okay. Let's start. So Oracle wallet creation. So I'm doing this in my 12.2010 64 bit. So you need to connect with system DBA first. Okay. And after a <coughs> successful connection, you need to see if there is anything. Uh, you have to check what's the exact default wallet location in your DB. So you can check with this table here. V uh, encryption underscore wallet. Here the column name VRL parameter will provide you the default wallet path. So here the, uh, my system, my DB is in Linux. So it is giving me like this UO and app Oracle admin here, you, whatever your DB name it is and wallet. If, <coughs> if it is, isn't there, then you need to create as a simple directory. You need to create it. Okay. Now the com first command you need to execute is Aura APK wallet, create wallet. This is a fixed one. Then you need to mention that path which you have extracted from here and then you need to provide one wallet password okay and then you have to mention auto login so once you have created everything you just need to execute this using sys db only okay after this you will you'll create your wallet okay now 
the next task is you need to uh, load the certificate here. Oracle Wallet has been created. Now you need to load the certificate to Oracle Wallet. So for that, this is the <coughs> uh, command we need to execute or IPK wallet add wallet. So this is our wallet location and this is our certificate location where we have the certificate saved in our system. So <coughs> wherever you have downloaded the certificate, just move it to your Linux machine in any of your directory and you have to mention the same path here. Okay, then you have to uh, mention that trust certificate. Then you have to mention the password which you have given while you have while you are creating your wallet. Okay, so just uh, try to load the certificate in the same manner like uh, first root, then their uh, immediate child, then its immediate child. So in that pattern. Okay, so st1, st2, st3. We have uh, <coughs> loaded three certificate into that particular Oracle wallet. Okay. Now, after this, uh, you can check using this command if all these certificates have been loaded into your wallet or not. So you can check using this command, just display whatever we have in this wallet. Okay. So in case you want to remove any of your certificate or all of your certificate, you can use this command, but we are not going to use it. This is just for your reference purpose. Okay. Now, once you are done with your certificate, uh, certification loading then uh, you can also check in your uh, directory in this directory you have now two files uh, with dot p12 and dot sso so these uh, just to make sure we have all our certificate loaded successfully okay so this is how you will create a wallet and how you will load your certificate inside that wallet okay now the uh, second step is also done. Now the third step is create <coughs> ACL and assign to host. So for this, we also need to create a ACL uh, using sysdba. You okay? Uh, so so this is how you will create. So first, you need to just make sure that uh, in this table you don't have any ACL related to send grid or anything. When you execute, it will say no record. You can mention any name, any is your wish. Okay. Now, how you create? You need to create using DBMS network ACL admin. This is a <coughs> utility you need to use. Create ACL. You have to provide your ACL name, whatever SendGrid I have mentioned. SendGrid you can you can mention anything. Then your description, anything you need to add, test for SendGrid configuration or anything. Then principal principal means you have to mention your username. Okay. So my any username you can mention here, okay, Scott or whatever is grant true privileges connect. So once you have created this, you are, now you need to assign your ACL to some host. So for this, you need to execute this command. This is the same ACL you have created here. Just make, <coughs> uh, just link it with some host. Okay. Once you are done. Now you need to add privileges to this particular ACL. So for adding the privileges, you need to execute these two commands. This is a privilege for connection, connect and this is for resource to the same user or any user you want to give the privileges. Okay, in this same format. Once you are done, but in case, uh, in case you, if you want to drop any ACL, this is the command you need to use, just drop ACL. Okay, but we uh, don't need here, so. You have created your ACL, you are assigned your host, you have added your privileges, both privileges connect and resolve. Now, after this, uh, whenever, when now, when you re execute the same command in uh, this one, if you re execute the same command, now you'll see your whole detail inside your table. So, uh, this lower limit, null, upper limit, null, null means uh, any range, it will. Uh, validate means it doesn't matter if any uh, is in which port this API is assigned to. So it doesn't matter. Okay. And you can also check your privileges against your ACL in this table. Now, if you execute this command mentioning that's the same ACL, uh, you'll see two records with one connect and resolve privilege. So this is how you will create or assign privileges to a to an ACL. So this is our third step. Uh, we have created the ACL, uh, assigned host to ACL. We also added privileges to ACL. Okay. Now the next step is 
uh, we need to assign wallet to ACL. Now we need to connect this ACL to this Oracle wallet we have just created in our second step. So how will you, how we, we will do that uh, using this assign wallet ACL command. So this is a simple one. You just need to mention your ACL here, a wallet path. Make sure this path should be same what you have used in here. Okay. So once you're done with <coughs> this command executed successfully, you can see a record for this same ACL and wallet path in this table, DBA wallet ACL. Okay, once you execute this table, you will see one record for this ACL. Okay, now this is how you link a wallet with an ACL. Okay, this is done. Uh, uh, so most of our configuration has been done. Now we just need to program and execute our or call our API using POST. So how we will do that? So for this, I just created one procedure as the send grid mail services. Here, uh, here you have to mention one URL, which is the API, which we are going to hit using post command. Okay. This is a content we will going to post against this. Uh, the API will respond and trigger the email. So we, uh, I just put the dummy, dummy rec entries here. So don't go with that. So the message, uh, they will the message in the body, email body should be, hey, welcome to Layman Kian. Okay, so all this, uh, you just replace this email IDs with your valid ones. Okay, once you are done, the second thing is you need to set wallet for that particular session. So in this uh, command, you have to make sure uh, this wallet is up and you need to provide here the wallet password. Make sure, okay. And now, uh, <clears throat> this is a Best data type where will you just post? But this is a simple syntax you uh, pretty much understand, I guess. Okay, so here uh, there is one more parameter you have to mention, which is HTTP post. Why I need to mention this parameter? I'll I'll just explain you in end of this video. Okay, so just begin request. Now you have to set headers. Uh, you have to authorization. Uh, here you need to mention your access key. Remember there. There should be one access key is given to you via send grid. So don't go with this uh, key. This is a fake one. Okay, it's a dummy one. It won't work. So uh, you have to mention your validate legal access key here. Content type should be application JSON. Okay, write text. It will write text into against this request. It will get the response. It will just show the response. You can print the response. And everything is done here. Okay, and the completed successfully message will be printed. So this is the whole process you need to execute. You just need to make sure a correct path, a correct wallet password, a correct post request should be there and a valid API key should be here. Okay, once you are done, compile and just uh, in case you want to execute the same process in some other schemas for some other user, you need to grant this uh, utility to that particular user schema or and this procedure to that schema. Okay. Now just execute and you will receive an email and we'll check. And before executing this email, this program, let me tell you why I need, I put this <clears throat> more parameter which is HTTPS post here uh, because uh, sometimes in Oracle there is a uh, still outstanding bug. There's no exact answer to the errors which we are getting while executing this process. Here are some errors I have listed here. Sometimes it says connection fail because target has an object host doesn't exist. Sometimes it says unknown error and sometimes it says certification of the remote server doesn't match the target address. If this error is there, there should be some problem with your Oracle wallet path. Might be this path is not accessible to the database or the user and whatever. There is some problem with this path. If this error is there and if these two errors are there, there is no particular direct solution. So when I find out I debug everything in the internet, so I found that we need to put this HTTP host here. And from where we will get this HTTP host value? 
uh, for HTTP host value, you need to again go to that API and click this lock button. The connection is secure, certificate is valid. Then you need to go to certification path, go to the root, uh, root certificate, then details. Then you have to go to subject parameter. Here it is, it is mentioned. The CN means common name, and this is the HTTP host you need to copy and paste it back to your program. Did this so all these two errors will remove and I got my email. Okay, so let's uh, let's now execute this program. Just give me a second. Okay, uh, so I have connected to my DB here. Okay, so here I just now need to execute this process we but just we have created. Okay, just execute and is completed successfully. Okay, now let's see if we got any email here. Yeah, exactly. Here it is. So here, welcome to Lemon Gyan. So this is sent via sent it there. So a mail got triggered. So thank you for watching. I hope you understand. If you have any question related to anything here, just drop a comment below and do subscribe. Thank you. Take care.